All right, welcome back. So the deadly banana did get a new skin, and well, I do like the design of this ship. It is very unique, and it does absolutely look a lot different from the rest of the ships. And besides, besides the new skin, I also did have a new fit for this ship. And I kind of want to test out this ship in the advanced missions, since it will be very interesting to see how this ship will perform. Now, speaking of the new skin, the new skin does look very, very interesting. I like it, and I will use it for this video, since I do want to have something, something new for the ship besides the, besides the fit. And I am very curious to see what the prototype destroyer will look like, and if, if we will get a free skin for that ship as well. Now for the modules, I still use the decomposers, which are the best weapon to use on this ship, since it already has a 75% bonus on the decomposer damage, which makes the ship's DPS very high. And these decomposers also hit very hard, since they are, after all, a faction module. And in the last beta, they were very powerful, and I could, I could make the ship to have at least... 300 or 400 DPS. I think I did reach 1000 DPS in the in the last beta. For the medium slots, I do use the Nosferatos to make my capacitor stable since they did remove one medium and one low slot from this from the prototype and I have to compensate for that with the Nosferatos. Now for the low slots, I do have a invulnerability field, a afterburner or a shield booster. Now, instead of the invulnerability field, you can also place a particle accelerator, which will increase the ship's DPS. But in that case, you are going to have less resistances, and the ship will take more damage. Now, speaking of the resistances, I do have the ship built for maximum tank, and I do have around 75% on all resistances currently on this ship, because I do have rigs for the for the all for the different damage types on module less in the low slot can be tricky especially in combat i did make this ship currently work very decently with the current fit that i have and these are advanced missions i think they are tier 5 to tier 6 and let's see how this ship will perform i am very curious to see what will happen now, instead of the afterburner, you can also place a micro drive, and if this ship will be very fast with a micro drive. But keep in mind, these ships are very slow by default, and don't expect them to be very fast. They will be fast, but probably not as fast as other destroyers in the game. But of course, this ship does have something that other destroyers don't have, and that is very powerful main weapons, in this case the decomposers and as you can see the decomposers are melting these rats very efficiently and keep in mind the prototypes <coughs> don't have a skill per level bonus on the on the weapons and this is only by the bonus, by the roll bonus of the ship which is still powerful and now I wanted to try this ship out in these missions just to see how my tank will hold out and I will fly between these missiles and so far the capacitor is holding the shield is slowly falling down now one thing that you have to keep in mind when you're flying this ship is you have to have at least a Mark 7 or a faction shield booster because this ship has a very large shield capacity and the classic Mark 5 and under shield boosters aren't going to be capable at restoring the shield quick enough so you want to have either a faction shield booster or at least a mark 7 shield booster to have any decent shield recovery rate or you can also have very decent resistances like i have and even these low shield boosts that i have will help to keep the shield in one balance at least which is in this round in this case around 20% shield, which is very low, and you definitely should not be having a stable shield tank at under 20%, because if this were, for example, wave number one, I would probably have to warp out for wave number two. But thankfully, this is the last wave, and 
the ship will hold out until the until these two caracals are out. So if I had a faction or at least a Mark 7 shield booster, this ship would recover the shield very quickly and I would not have the constant I, I wouldn't have the problem of having low shield constantly. But even with this build it is doable and you have to keep in mind part of me receiving so much damage is because of the ship's signature radius which is rather large for a destroyer and I don't know what the signature radius on the Talvar is, I think it's around 20 meters, I have to check that but the signature radius for this ship is around 51, 51 or 52 meters which is quite big for a destroyer and the overall ship length is around I think 350 meters which makes this ship a very large destroyer and of course large targets are easy to hit so you can expect to be hit while fighting these rats and of course this ship will, of, will be very efficient in PvP especially if you have several of these ships in a fleet since let's say if all these can do 1.5k damage alpha with one cycle of the decomposers. 10 of these can give you 15,000 15, alpha and yeah, that can melt a lot of ships very quickly. And it is also very interesting to note that these weapons also have a very fast cycle so you will not going to have any problems uh, with having to wait for the cycle to return and it is comparable to the it is comparable to the rapid missiles on the Calvary ships and in DPS it is comparable to the missiles from the Talvar. Of course the Talvar is having a 12 second cycle between missiles while this has at least a 6 second which, which is twice as fast as on the Talvar which of course means the ship will take out other ships very fast and I don't know if I should try this ship in PvP since it is after all a special edition ship and I'm kind of afraid to lose it since I don't know if I can recover it with the vouchers. I think you can recover the ship with the vouchers since I did see that this ship is capable to be recovered with the vouchers that we can get from the from the login bonuses. But of course I am not going to risk losing any ships, so I'll be using this ship for mostly I'll be mostly using this ship for PvE and other other stuff that's similar to PvE and missions and of course other uh, special occasions. Now I was thinking if I uh, if I could give away this ship to uh, to, a to a random pilot for a event that I was planning, but uh, some people told me that you can that you can't actually trade these ships and. I'm, I'm curious to know, can you actually trade these ships via contracts or can you actually sell these ships? Since I think it would be very interesting if I could give away the ship to, uh, to a, to a ran random pilot in the future in one of the events that I will probably have. Of course, that is if it's possible to actually give away this ship. If not, well, then I'll just give away another ship that I'll be using. So I'm very curious to, to know if I can actually at least sell this ship via, con via a contract since it will be important for me if I want to give away this ship to, uh, in the future. But so far, uh, at the moment, I'll definitely, I'll definitely fly around and play around with the ship since I have to say it is rather satisfying to fly this ship and to shoot other targets with it. Since in the last beta, this ship was very famous for being one of the most overpowered ships in the game. And this ship did not have a tank in the last beta, and it was mostly a ship that was easy to kill. But of course, this ship was also a very, very dangerous opponent in PvP in the last beta. And most people in the last beta were flying th this ship because it was so effective and of course because it was so so powerful now i don't know how powerful will the battlecruiser be i do expect that ship to be 
absolutely I do, I do expect that ship to be weaker than in the last beta because the battle cruiser was capable at delivering 15,000 alpha uh, literally and I was using that ship to rat in low sec and it did also have a very long range so I'm very curious to to actually play with that ship since that ship is one of my favorites in the last beta and that ship will also be very interesting since it will be I think my first faction battlecruiser in the game and of course it will be a special edition ship and who knows maybe that ship will also be expensive at one point into the future since you have to keep in mind these ships are a one-time thing only and you get those ships this time and probably probably they won't be around after that so if you have one of these ships keep them safe since they might be very expensive in the future since they are after all a special edition ship and who knows they might actually get buffed into the future if they be if they become super rare but again we will see what will happen if however they become super rare then i expect a very very high selling price and it will be interesting if that happens of course but so far i do see these ships from time to time it's very interesting that i don't see those ships as often as I did expect, since everyone was flying these ships in the for in the last beta. And well, I did see a couple of these ships, and I do see a couple of them per day. I don't see them as much as I did expect, and I think that's mostly because these ships are, after all, a special edition ship, and people do keep them safe, which is very good. And and of course. Uh, very good and at one point I'll be very curious to see if I can manage to catch one of these in PvP since having one of these as a kill would definitely be an honor and we will see what will happen now speaking of PvP I I think I'll be making a second uh, second PvP completion very soon of course I still need to get a couple items and I do plan to get other ships and of course I have to focus to get a ship that is capable at sniping enemies from a very long distance since I do slowly prepare myself for these storyline missions and well since I think I'll be doing them solo I need a ship that is that has a very long range so that I can snipe the faction ships from at least 80 or more kilometers since I definitely do not want to get swarmed by faction ships in these storyline missions since I've heard that the storyline ships and that the enemies in the storyline missions are very powerful and I don't want to risk losing my ships and of course I'll be experimenting with a lot of builds and I'll be experimenting with a lot of ships and I will find a perfect ship for these missions and who knows, that ship might be very easy to get and I already have a stabber and I think I'll be trying out that uh, I'll be trying out that ship with the cannons and I think with the cannons uh, I remember reading a comment telling me that I can make the stabber with the cannons work with at least 50 plus kilometers which is perfect and if that's the case then I am going to get the cannons right now and I'm going to actually try try it out myself to see if I can to see if I can use that ship for these missions since my goal ship was to get one of the sniper tactical destroyers since I remember that they had very long range and that you can make them to that you can make them snipe from a, from at least 100 kilometers, which would be perfect in my case, since I do want to snipe these storyline, storyline faction ships, which, which can be dangerous if they get too close to me. And it will be interesting to see how, how that will turn out. And of course, I do plan to record that as well, since those missions are going to be very difficult, and I do want to have a very decent guide on these missions on the channel, since I do want to help people clearing these missions, to clear these missions, of course. Well, 
uh, that this Vexor is definitely not having a good time since this Vexor is getting destroyed by the decomposers. Now, you can see me that I did change the fit at one point. I did have a web firm, and that is because I was trying out to see if slowing down the enemy ship speed can affect my damage and well while it did affect my damage it wasn't uh, that great to consider using a webifer since i do need my capacitor because this ship does use a lot of energy and i was thinking if i should go get the capacitor modules which by the way if you are if you are running this fit you should absolutely go and get the capacitor rigs since they will help you a lot but I decided to save my ISK since I have, after all, I do need a lot of ISK for the future ships and I'll absolutely get the capacitor rigs for this ship at one point and then I'll see how much is my capacitor improved in combat. Well, let me approach this ship and after I approach this ship then I can... Now, speaking of the range, the decomposers have a range uh, the small decomposers have a range up to 13 kilometers in my case and everything above 13 kilometers will be a instant instant miss now under 13 kilometers I did manage to hit targets up to one kilometer so even at close distances you can use the ship if a smaller ship gets too close to medium decomposers however then since they have poor tracking you're not going to be able to hit a smaller ship with the medium decomposers which might be important and which will be actually important for the battle cruiser since then you have to separate your targets by range and then you have to shoot the target that's closest to you and in most cases the closest targets to you are going to be frigates since they are the fastest the frigates and destroyers in the case of faction elite frigates or elite destroyers the faster ships are going to be the destroyers and the interdictors especially. The interdictors are going to be the ones that are going to approach you very quickly. And making them a primary target is absolutely a good idea. Since they can web you and they can scramble you. And if that happens then the other ships can approach your ship faster. And in that case you risk of losing the ship. Which isn't a pleasant experience, and you should absolutely avoid losing ships, if possible, of course. Well, I think this will be the last mission. Now I have to say, this ship is fun to fly, although its speed is kind of not enough for me, since I am used to fly fast ships. But since this ship does offer a good tank, and with better, with a better in, um, with a better shield booster, and with a better in vulnerability field, I can make this ship be even more tankier and I might even attempt to clear the more difficult tier 7, tier 8 and tier 9 missions with this ship to we'll try that out to see what will happen and I think it will be interesting to find out. Well, uh, let's take out the last, the last Kyakal here. Now, in a lot of the situations I do find this ship kind of kind of weird to fly with a with one uh, with one slot less on the on the low modules and one slot less in the in the mid slots but after all it is a prototype and even as a prototype it still does a very good job at at what it's supposed to do which is good and if you have this ship again keep it safe and if you if you are using this ship then make sure that you're using it at at missions or anomalies that you are sure that you're not gonna lose it since these ships are potentially going to be very expensive in the future of the game and it will be worth to keep them since it will be very interesting to see what the market in the game will offer in maybe one year from now we will see well, uh, two more Krakals, I guess, since since I think yeah, that, that was the it was the first wave and this is the second wave. Okay. Well, two more Krakals to go, and so far, uh, I think when they introduce ammo in the game, that will be also very interesting since ammunition will give you specific bonuses, whether it be range, 
whether it be rate of fire or whether it be overall DPS of a ship. It will be interesting to see what the ammunition on on these ships will be. Okay, last, well this is actually the last Caracal this time around. And of course I do plan to live stream this game next week I think. And I think it will be interesting since it will be the first live stream of Eve Echoes that I was that I will be doing and I hope to see you there since I will be I will be flying missions, I'll be playing missions and I'll be doing a lot more. Who knows? I might decide to do PvP. It depends. Since I also do plan the 1000 subscriber special and I mean I kind of think I'm thinking if I should save uh, save the live stream for 1000 subscriber special but again we will see since that is also around the corner at this at this moment well with this being said i hope that you enjoyed it is a pleasure to play this game for you and i do enjoy this game a lot so um, i hope to see you next time fly safe and take care